Yeah, so welcome everybody back to another day. So we're still going to hang out in section 9.4 a little bit if you want to follow along and browse through some of the examples while we're talking. We introduced yesterday the idea of uh, completing the square, which is really just um, setting something equal to its vertex form. That's all. And uh, we also looked at the topic of how to take a, a quadratic and solve it, like a, like a quadratic equation, and then solve it using uh, completing the square. And the reason why we use this instead of factoring is that sometimes those solutions, they're not going to be just like, like uh, integers, right? They'll be like we had one last time that was negative five plus or minus the square root of 29. And when your solutions are kind of more complex like that, like you, you, like you see out in the quote unquote real world, then it's kind of more useful to be able to do something like complete the square. So before we get into it, well, or I should say as we get into it, let me give you something to just uh, review from last time. So take this quadratic, so take 3g squared. Minus 24 times g plus 27. Equal to zero. So please solve this uh, by completing the square or by using the vertex form. And if you have a calculator, uh, round your answer to, to two decimal places. So you can actually work it out that way. After giving you some time to think about it.
Let's check my sound. After giving you some time to think about it. So let's complete the square. Let's choose the vertex form, and that's going to be a times x minus h squared plus k. So we want to make the left-hand side look like this, and then it's set equal to 0. And the first thing I want to do, just to simplify my arithmetic, is to um, maybe, maybe factor out 3. So maybe write this as 3 times g squared, and 24 is 8 times 3, so minus 8g. 27 is 9 times 3. You don't have to do this, but like if you, if you do, then you have 3 times this equal to 0, and you can actually divide both sides by 3 and end up with just g squared minus 8g plus 9, which might be a little, a little bit easier to work with. But you don't have to do it that way. Um, so I want to find the vertex first. So I want to find out what's h. And so I'm going to be working with this equation. You know, this is equal to 0. So h is negative b over 2a. And so you see, like, if I had stayed working with 3g squared, like, whatever, um, uh, the number h would be the same, no matter whether I'm with this one or with that one. But with this one, I have to divide by 2a to cancel out the fact that b is bigger. And here for that one, I, I don't. So anyway, working with this equation, so negative b is a positive 8 divided by 2 times a, so that's 2. So my h is 4, and my, my number k, I get this by, by plugging in 4 for g into this expression. So that's going to be uh, 4 squared minus 8 times 4. plus 9, right? So that's 16 minus 32 plus 9. 16 minus 32 is negative 32 plus 9 is negative 23. Is that right? So correct me if you see me making some, making some mistake. Uh, but now that I've got h and k, I can rewrite this because this is going to be a times x minus h squared plus k. And so here a is equal to 1, so I get um, 1 times x minus h. h is 4. And then plus negative 23. So that's minus 23 is all equal to 0. So now I need to solve this equation for, for x. So I'm thinking I'll add 23 to both sides and give myself x minus 4 squared equal to 23. Then I'm thinking I want to take the square root of both sides. So that, that was the point of going into vertex form, right? It's like something squared plus, a, plus or minus a constant. Bring the constant to the other side. Now I can take the square root of the square. And what I will be left with is whenever you take a quantity squared and then take the square root, you have the absolute value because x minus 4 is some number. You don't know what it is. It could be positive. It could be negative. But the square root of the square is always going to be positive. So we use the absolute values. So absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to the square root of 23. And then in order to get rid of the absolute value, I'm thinking x minus 4 must be plus or minus. Must be plus or minus. 23. And therefore, x, adding 4 to both sides, x is going to be 4 plus or minus the square root 
of 23. So those are the two solutions. Um, you can you can write out two of them if you want. Four plus square root of 23 or four minus square root of 23. But oh yeah, we were supposed to do this out to the nearest one hundredth. I could, I, I think you, you know you just have to work that out on a calculator. There's no other way you could you could do this without one. So uh, I'll just do that on my phone. So four plus twenty three square root button. I'm getting. Uh, 8.795, and so rounding it out to the hundredths place, since this digit is a five, uh, I want to increase this digit by one, which makes it 10, which turns this into 8.879 8 plus one. So like 8.80 if you like, or just, I mean, up to two digits, you you do it like that. So that's my four plus square root of 23 for four minus square root of 23. Uh, let me try that out. So I'm taking four minus 23 square root. And here I'm getting uh, negative 0.795. So rounding it to two digits, negative 0.80. If you got something different, let me know because I could have made a mistake. Um, yeah, there's no solution in the book or anything. But I, but I think that, I mean, I say that like every time I do a problem, but I, I don't think I made any mistakes, but, but who knows? Okay. So any questions or comments on that? We talked about this a little last time too. I'll, I'll, I'll emphasize um, I'll emphasize the book's method of completing the square as well, at least for like one or two more times to try to make it clear that you can do this two ways. So the, the other way to do this with which is basically the same as what I'm doing, but but like the other way to do this is to bring the constant to the other side first and say three. Well, actually, I mean, the first step is probably still to, to divide everything by three so that you get um, g squared minus eight g plus nine equals zero. So, I mean, let's make the, the same first step. And um, then if you bring the nine to the other side, you can try to, to complete the square here. So that is to say, uh, if you just take eight over two, which is four, and then square it and add that to both sides. So if you just take 16 and add it to both sides, So the reason why I added 16 to both sides is if you take something that like doesn't have a constant term, right? So we just forget about the nine. The nine's like on the other side of the equation. If you take something that doesn't have a constant term, you can turn this into a square by taking b over two, squaring it, and then adding it. And then this side will become g minus four squared. It's kind of a neat little trick. Yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll show like a couple different examples to, to explain the idea a little bit further. So say you had like x squared plus, like go back to this one from yesterday. Um, 
and, and but say it was like equal to, to negative three. And I want to like add something to both sides of the equation to turn the uh, left hand side into a square. And um, what you, there's a little trick you can do. You can just take the middle term, this number B, divide it by two, and then you can square it. And if you add nine to both sides, so plus nine, plus nine, so it's okay to add the same thing to both sides of the equation. What'll happen is that this turns into x plus three squared, which would be which would then be equal to six. And so why that is true, um, like if you have x plus b squared, the answer is. Well, let's actually let, let's use six as b. So this is like x plus b over two squared. The answer is always going to be x squared plus two times b over two plus b over two squared, and well, x squared plus two times b over two times x plus b over two squared equals x squared plus bx plus b over two. Squared. So what happens is when you're given just x squared plus b times x, you can turn it into this by taking b over 2 and squaring it. And then it'll be x plus b over 2 squared. Um, and that, that's a lot of like algebra mumbo jumbo, but in practice, you take this middle number, divide it by 2, square it, and then add it to both sides. And then it'll be like x plus 3 squared in this case. Or for here, you've got um, negative 8. So take negative 8, divide it by 2 to get minus 4. Square it to get 16. Add 16 to both sides, and this automatically becomes g minus 4 squared. Be yeah, right, right, right. Because, because this number is now your, your b over 2, and then when you do the special product formula, it's guaranteed to work out like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. And the, and the, the reason why people like to call this completing the square is because you're, you're completing it means adding that extra number and completing the square because it turns into something squared. And then 16 minus 9 is, um, what, 7? So you get g um, minus 4 equals equals 7. So you get absolute value of g minus 4 equal to square root of 7. Did I have a different number last time? So when I solve this, I get g minus 4 equals plus or minus root 7, and therefore g would be 4 plus or minus square root of 7. Did I have a different number last time? Root 23. So <laughs> I'm, they, 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 they can't both be right. So I must have made a mistake somewhere. They can't both be right. Um, so taking out 3 gives you g squared minus 8g. Um, 3 times 9 is 27, right? Uh, g squared minus 8g. Subtract 9 from both sides. Seems right. Divide by 2 to get negative 4. 4 squared is 16. Add 16 to both sides. So this seems like it's okay. Maybe I made a mistake in the in the other one. I don't like to leave the mistakes hanging, so let's try to figure out the other one again. Um, like if you if you have g squared minus eight g. Plus nine equals zero. You're completing the square. You're trying to do vertex form here, figuring out h k. So you figure out h equals negative b 
b over 2a, so you figure out that that's 8 over 2 equals 4, so that we agreed on, and then k was plugging in. It's like f of 4, where your function f of g is g squared minus 8g plus 9. So plugging in 4 for g, you get 16 minus 8 times 4, which is 32 plus 9. Yeah, I must have just added this up wrong, because 16 minus 32 is minus 16 plus 9. And then that gives me... Um, minus 7. I must have had like a like a minus 9 instead of a plus 9. That's what happened. So when I rewrite this, it's actually g squared. It's actually, when I rewrite this in vertex form, it's g minus 4 squared minus 7 equal to 0. And you can see, you get the exact same result. You get g minus 4 squared equal to 7. And you can see the thing that you add to both sides gives you, gives you the, the same number, like 7 in this case, negative 7 here, but then you bring it to the other side to get 7. So the completing the square method that the book gives you and the using vertex form method that I prefer um, both give you the right answer. Uh, so long as you don't make any arithmetic mistakes, which which can happen. Cool. So, any questions or anything on that? Let's give you another one. Let's give you another one. So let's take m squared plus 12m equal to minus 8. So please solve this one using the completing the square technique. So please, what can you add here and add there to turn left-hand side into a square and then proceed further? So take a few moments and please work on that.
after giving you some working time. I'm thinking like 12 over 2 is 6, and then 6 squared is 36. So I'm thinking of adding 36 to both sides. And then this is now going to become m plus 6 squared. And this is going to become 36 minus 8 is 30 minus 2 is 28, right? And 28 is 4 times 7. So when I take the square root of both sides, square root of m plus 6 squared is absolute value of m plus 6. Square root of 4 times 7 should be 2 root 7. And then that's telling me that quantity m plus 6 should be equal to plus or minus 2 root 7. So m plus 6 equals plus or minus 2 root 7. And therefore m is equal to what? Negative 6 plus or minus 2 root 7. So you get these two options. And we didn't ask you to round it this time. So I, I think that um, this is what people call like an exact form. So if you're not allowed to use a calculator on an exam or something, then you would write your answers exactly like that uh, with, with the square root being reduced. If you are allowed to use a calculator, then you would, uh, I mean, depending on the context, you might just plug that in and round to the nearest hundredth to get the approximate location. And since I struggled a little bit with the algebra last time, I'm going to try to still also solve this with my uh, vertex, with finding the uh, vertex trick. And you can say, OK, well, let's just find the vertex. Let's find hk. H is negative B over 2 times A. So negative B is minus 12. And 2 times A is just 2 equals minus 6. So it's that same factor of 6. There's a uh, like a negative here this time. And k, well, I just have to plug this in. So I get minus 6 squared plus 12 times minus 6. So that's going to give me 36. And what's 12 times 6? Is that 72? Uh, so 36 minus 72. So is that like negative 36? So given h and k, I can write the left-hand side in vertex form as like m minus h. So that's m plus 6 it's minus minus 6 squared. And then what is it? Plus k? So that's minus 36. And that's equal to negative 8. So that's what was on the left-hand side. And hopefully the, the numbers will match up again. So this tells me that m plus 6, oops, this tells me that m plus 6 squared is equal to 36 minus 8. Which is equal to 28, which is what we had before. And the rest of the problem proceeds similarly, you know, absolute value of m plus 6 equals 2 root 7, and you keep solving it like you did before. So if you complete the square and solve it, then you're, you're taking 12 over 2 and squaring it. 
if you find the vertex form, what that does for you automatically is it kind of, um, it, it finds the number that you need to add to both sides in order to, in order to have this nice square there. So it's just your preference whether you like to complete the square or use vertex form. And by the way, like later on in the class, like I will teach you the quadratic formula uh, just because it's so ingrained in society, I guess. Everybody talks about it, that it's useful to know it. But I mean, th this is it. Th this is how you solve quadratic, quadratic equations. And the quadratic formula, when we learn it, it it's nothing but the end result of, of doing this, this process. So like, if you can get a handle on this, then you know how to solve quadratic equations. There's nothing else you really need to learn. Uh, there's nothing else you really need to learn about solving quadratic equations. Uh, some some real life applications. We've seen stuff similar to this before. So let's do a mathematical model. So the function y equals negative 16 x squared plus 96x. Uh, this represents the height uh, given in feet of a model rocket, like x seconds after it's launched. Model rocket x seconds after launch. I mean, which kind of makes sense because when x is equal to zero, you're you're at the ground, you haven't gone anywhere. And then, as time moves on, for for a while, this term will be the biggest, and you'll be going up. But then, as the seconds go on, this term will start to dominate that one and be pushing you, pushing you back down. So, without actually making a real attempt to graph it like sort of doing a sketch, you expect the trajectory of the bottle rocket to make that parabolic shape, which, which goes with your experience, right? Like you launch something up under the influence of gravity and, and look, you get a nice parabola. Uh, Okay, so um, the question, is, is there actually like a question here? The question is to find out what's the maximum height of the rocket. So what's the maximum height? And this I'll let you work on without any scaffolding. So um, take a few minutes, see what you can do, and then we'll discuss.
Okay, if you like, um, even without solving the problem, what's your strategy here? What should what should we find in order to solve this? What would do it? Like looking at the graph, which point on the parabola should we try to find? Like what's the name for that highest point? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, You want to find that vertex. And if you want to find the height, um, well, remember, like every point in the graph has, has a y value and then and the next value. And in this axis is the height. So we're going to want the, the um, the y value of that vertex, right? And that's going to tell us like the maximum height. So we can go straight to work. Like this is going to be solved by putting this into vertex form. That's the cool thing. You you can actually solve a, a real problem by just converting the form of the parabola. So you take h equals negative b over two a. So negative ninety six over two times um, six sixteen. Uh, 2 times negative 16, excuse me, because A is negative 16. So that's going to be 96 over 32. What is that? Is that equal to 3? And that's telling me that uh, 1, 2, 3, that's the x coordinate. And so the y coordinate, the height, would be now plugging in. Uh, the number three. So plug in the number three and get minus 16, three squared, plus 96 times three. And so you could use a calculator for this. I'll, I'll try to do it in my head. So three squared is nine. What's nine times 16? That's 90 plus six times nine. Is it 90 plus 54? Right? Is that... Um, Minus 144. And what's 96 times 3? 9 times 3 is 27. So 90 times 3 is 270. 6 times 3 is 18. 270 plus 18 is 288. Two eighty eight minus one forty four looks like that's going to be one forty four feet. So that's telling me that the highest the rocket was off the ground um, was one hundred and forty four feet. So you send it off on its trajectory. It, it ran out of gas, started free falling, and eventually came back down to earth. And you, the other question people ask like the SAT questions or whatever is um, how long did it take for the thing to land? Which would mean you're just looking for that, that X value. You know that zero is a root and you know that there's one more root over here. In fact, we'll go ahead and ask that question. Why not? I think you can solve it. So how long, how many seconds? until landing. So how many seconds until the, the rocket lands? Work on that for a couple minutes.
letting you think for a minute, I'll discuss. So um, if finding the height was the same thing as, excuse me, as converting to vertex form, finding how many seconds till you land is, is really the same thing as converting to intercept form. So you just want to find that root. So when I say converting to vertex form, I mean we found the vertex, which was, so vertex form is, is a negative 16 times x minus h, so that's x minus 3 squared plus k, and k was 144. So we figured out, really, that this quadratic is equal to that one, and because of that, the maximum height is 144. You can see that's the, that's the height you get when this really vanishes and you're not being brought down anymore. Now, if I want to find this number x, the first root is 0. If I want to find the other root, then really what I'm wanting to do is rewrite this now as not vertex form, not standard form, but like factored form. And I know that, that one of the roots is equal to 0 already. So it's like a times, so take r to be 0. So this is like a times x minus s. And, I, and I'm, you know, not trying to be coy because, like, a is negative 16, right? So it's minus 16. And just factoring out this x, what's left over is um, x because minus 16x times x is negative 16x squared. And then plus, um, well, how do you factor out negative 16 from 96? Because we need a minus sign. So the two negatives will make a positive. And what's 96 divided by 16? Is that equal to 4? 16 times 2 is, or is it equal to, to 6? Yeah, because 16 times 6 is 96. So yeah, really just factor out this uh, 16x. And then you can just read it off from here that your two solutions are x equals 0, which you already knew, and x equals 6, which you've just, just discovered. You, can also, you also could have got that from symmetry. Since you knew the vertex occurred at 3, and since you knew that it's one root was at 2, so this distance is 3 seconds, which means it has to be the same distance to the other, other root. Like maybe you call this distance z. And you know 3 is like your h, right? So you have h plus z is your first root, and you have h minus z is your second root. So the roots are always going to be of the form h, this x-coordinate of the vertex, plus or minus the same distance, because they have to be equidistant from the same place. So the roots are given by h, plus or minus z. So that's what you're seeing, like when you're seeing this um, number plus or minus, like square root of whatever. It's that square root of whatever is the distance from the vertex x-coordinate of the vertex to the root. So you're either adding it or you're subtracting it. So in this case, you're getting 3 plus 3 or 3 minus 3 to give you 0 or 6. All that to say, uh, the answer is 6. Okay, so I think that's enough for today. So thank you, everybody, for your time, and we'll see you on Friday.